your open source advocate and I'm back with another video. I wanted to give you a little something while I'm working on the TrueNAS series. Um, that's going to take a little bit longer for me to get recorded and then edited together, but I did want to, of course, keep you going while we're waiting. So there's a couple of cool little applications that I found that are just some simple Linux dashboard type applications that you can kind of mess with and modify and do some different things with. Um, they're, they're really pretty cool. Um, so these are just some cool little dashboards that they have for Linux. This one's called Linux Dash. And then this one's called Ward, W-A-R-D, and here you can just see some real quick statistics. It's just a nice, clean-looking dashboard, and these are running in Docker. Now, there's a little work involved in getting Ward set up for sure in Docker, but Linux Dash is actually very quick and very simple. Um, I think you lose a couple of these panels just because you're running it in Docker and it's containerized, but overall it does give you some good information. And you've got some tabs here across the top where you can go through and kind of see some information about your system. And here you can see it's working to try to gather some information for this card. And then as you get into these different things, you can, as you can see, you can kind of minimize these cards. And then this one has a little refresh button here to refresh the data. Same thing here. And it does have these handles, which I think is to be able to move around these panels, but it's not working for me right now. I'm not sure why. But it does have some pretty cool information that you can see. So as you move across, you can see specifically network information. You can see a little bit more information here for accounts. And then if there was apps, and again, I think this is limited by it running inside of Docker. Um, but you do have some pretty cool information that you can even get with it running inside of Docker. So you can see network information based on whatever your network connectivity is. And then over here you get a little bit more information about uh, basic info as they call it. And then here you kind of get the nice overall dashboard view for what's going on in your system. So this is really meant to be like run on a server where you access it through a web page. In this case I'm accessing it through localhost. But it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to set up. And again, um, Linux Dash and then Ward is the same way. It really doesn't take a lot to set these up. just takes a little bit of, you know, get in there and do it. So we're going to go through the install here real quick for each of these. So I'm just going to close this down. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up. And that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. And I'm going to go back over here to the GitHub pages for each one. So this one's the GitHub page. This one's a Docker page here. Um, now you can run Linux Dash natively, and I think that's how it's intended to be run. But somebody was good enough to make a, a Docker version of it, so I just set it up in Docker real quick. So when you start looking at Ward, it's got some cool stuff. It's got screenshots. It kind of shows you what's going on with it. And you can see the code, of course. This is open source. So as you move down, you get some instructions here, and it kind of tells you, okay, it runs with Java. You are you can make a jar file and run it natively. But if you want to run it in Docker, then you can do that, and they kind of tell you how to do it. Now, they don't have a pre-made image. Somebody might have made one already, but in this case, they didn't have one. But it's really easy to set this up. And the first thing we want to do is actually go pull down this repository, so I've got the instructions back here in the background in the browser and they want you to basically pull down the project build and do a tag for ward now they don't have the quite the correct uh, command here so I'll show you the correct one then you run it pretty much and then you go to the browser with the port that you set up so we'll talk about the ports and stuff and then they just have a hint here that if you have a problem the first time just hit refresh and it should come up so we'll try that. So first we've got to pull down the actual application. So we're going to go up here to the top of it and anytime you want to do that you just click on this and then you just click copy for the repository location. And now we can go back to the bottom for the instructions but we'll go back to our browser and we'll say git clone and then we'll paste in that repository and it's going to pull that down and create the ward folder for us. So now we'll do cd ward and in here you'll see that there is a docker file. So we're going to use this docker file to build this project. So I'm going to clear that out. The next step is to build the actual file. So we say docker build-t and then we're going to tell it what we want to call this uh, image. So we're going to call it word, all lowercase in my case. You can type it however you want. And then we're going to put a period right here. So a space and a period. So it should be docker build-t 
word space period and the little period says just try to find the docker file in the folder that we're currently in which is where it's at so we're going to hit that we're going to let it build it's going to go out and grab dependency images and pull those down so that was where you saw maven and open jdk and some of that stuff uh, when it's done with that then it'll continue with the build process and you'll kind of see what it looks like here it runs just a bunch of text up the screen but it didn't take very long so it finished that build and now we should have our actual uh, images in there so if we clear out the console we do docker images we can see right here we've got Ward, now we've got one that doesn't get a name, but then we've got Maven and we've got OpenJDK, which are the dependencies for Ward. So we've got it built. That's great. Step one, step two, complete. Now we're actually going to go grab that docker run command. And we're just going to copy and paste it into, uh, into our terminal there. We just want that command. And then we'll bring our terminal back up and we'll paste. Now there's a couple things you'll want to change here. So first of all, it has these placeholders for application port. Pick whatever port you want. I'm going to put 5,000 uh, in my case and on both sides of the colon. So you need one for the host and one for the uh, container. And then 5,000 again. And then over here, I'm going to leave 4,000 on the right because that's the, that's the actual container application port that it needs. So don't, don't change this one. But on the left side, you can change this to whatever you want or leave it 4,000. In my case, 4,000 is taken on this machine. So I'm going to make it 4020, which is just simple for me to remember. And then it has docker run dash dash rm dash dash it. So it runs in the, you know, in the, runs it like you can see it all running in the terminal here. And then hyphen hyphen name ward. So I'm going to take out these parts because I don't want to see it. I'm going to tell it to run as a daemon. So it'll actually run in the background. And then I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to let it start up. Now, when you get this thing, that means that it's basically started, but you want to give it a minute just to make sure everything gets running in the background. If you want to run it the way that it was, it's fine with the dash dash rm and the hyphen uh, lt or it. Um, but I've done that already, and it shows a bunch of text on the console. And when you close the console, it kills the application. Uh, but we should be able to go to our browser now, open up a tab. And we're going to go to localhost colon 4020, and then it should redirect us to 5000. And it did, and there's Ward. So when you come here, you can say, what is the name of the server? So when they say the name of the server, they're really talking about like your, your domain name for your local domain or your IP address. In this case, mine is localhost, so I'm just going to put that in. You can choose the light theme or the dark theme. We'll try the dark theme this time. And then the application port I set as 5,000. So don't forget what you set that application port to. And then just click this button. And it may not come up right away. We'll give it just a second. And then we'll just hit retry to see if it'll load. There we go. For whatever reason that happens, but they, they give you the hint like, hey, if it doesn't load, just hit retry and it should come up. So there you go. You've got Ward up and running and everything looks good here. And I think now you should just be able to go to, let me try this. Uh, localhost 5000 yeah and it's going to bring everything up and show you all of the information so now you've got this thing running it's running as a daemon I don't have to worry about it quitting on me in the background and I can see some information about my system so I can see processor usage I can see RAM usage I can see what the storage usage is and here it says five disks so I do have several uh, USB disks connected to this thing as well and then over here it shows me my uptime, so two days, three hours, 11 minutes, 34, 35, and it just keeps counting up. So it shows you your uptime for the machine as well. So you can see the uptime as well, and then here you can kind of see just an overall utilization percentage given in this chart down below. So it's a nice little dashboard. There's not a lot to it. You don't really customize anything about it. It's just got some nice, uh, got a nice layout and easy to look at. So that's Ward. Ward is a pretty simple one to do. You saw that it's not really that hard. They give you all the instructions you need. So now we're going to go do Linux Dash. So this one is also really not hard and they give you the command right here at the bottom. So you just highlight this guy right here. We'll open up the terminal again and we'll clear this out. And I don't want to be inside of the Ward folder so I'm just going to CD out of that. And I'm just going to Control Shift and V like Victor to paste in this command. I'm going to double check that it has everything that I need. So you can run uh, Linux Dash on ARM or on x86. So if you look back here at the documentation, you run it on ARMF or ARM32 version 7 architecture. 
So you can run that on a Raspberry Pi, you can run it on, on a several different things, okay? So then you have x86 and the x86 architecture, which is kind of what we're running actually. So you can run it on either one. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi and you want to run this on it, you can. Um, so here's the Docker command that we copied. We're going to open this up and we see the command here that we've got. So I'm going to go back. Um, so this is port 80, 80 and 8080. So you're going to run this thing on port 8080 on your machine and then 8080 on the container. Now this side you don't mess with, but if you need to change that port for some reason, you can. Um, I don't mind 8080, it's not in use on my machine right now, so I'm just gonna leave it like that, but if you wanted to change it to something else, you absolutely could do that. So it's gonna do docker run dash D, which means as a daemon, set this port mapping so I can go onto my host machine at this port and it'll get to the container at this port, and then give it the name Linux hyphen dash, and then it's going to pull down, I might be Bob, hi, uh, slash Linux hyphen dash, colon x86. So we're just going to hit enter. It's going to go grab this thing. It's going to pull it down. It's going to get it ready. And there you go. It says that it's up and running, but again, give it just a minute to get started, just in case. It doesn't take very long usually. But if you want to know, is it running, you can say docker logs Linux dash. And right there it says Linux dash server started on port 8080. So we should be able to go there so we can open up another tab. So here's still Ward running. And now we can go to localhost colon 8080. And there's Linux dash up and running. So we're running this thing in Docker. Again, you lose a little bit on some of these cards because Docker just doesn't give you access to that information on the system. But if you want to run it natively, there's instructions on the Linux dash GitHub on how to do that as well. So I'll make sure to link that in the show description and the show notes. So there's a couple of really nice, simple dashboards that you can run. One of them will run on Pi or on x86 machines. Uh, very easy to get set up and running. Uh, the other one may run on the Pi since it uses Java, honestly. I just I haven't tried it on a Pi, so I can't say for sure if Ward will run on a Pi or not. But if some of you try it and find out that it can, let us know so that we can share that with everybody else. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. Thank <laughs> you.